It's 9.15, and before Andrew left the house, he, like, cleared up a few things, so I want to do something nice and kind of return the favor, show him that I'm thinking about him, and I'm going to try to clear up this place a little bit, add a nice touch. I'm also going to prepare some chia for tomorrow. I've been trying to cook a little bit in this place and I, I don't feel like I've been getting it right. I've been just kind of botching up all the recipes and I think it's, part of it is I'm just not used to this. It's, you know, it's there's just a stove top and a microwave and I'm not used to in, in one, one pan. And I, I don't know, each place that we move to, it's like a adjustment to learn my style with what I want to make in that place and also it's just that like my dinner tonight was three dollars something like it's so cheap to eat uh out have a delicious meal made for you that it's, all, it's almost like not really worth it to go shopping at the grocery store it's actually kind of more expensive just to go shopping at the grocery store because like these restaurants they buy they they get deals um at the grocery stores are the grocery stores are made for expats so they're just more expensive so anyways um so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna prepare some chia for tomorrow maybe i'll get some of I'll get, I'll get a video of a little bit of the chia that we make. Uh, it's gonna be hopefully better than this morning's. here so I, I want to show you guys what I got before I watch my show I want to show you guys so I got a kari sayur which is the vegetable curry um, I asked them to put no tempeh I don't like the tempeh but there's just tofu mm. I'm gonna show you here So this tofu curry, and underneath that, there's all my sprays. <laughs> mosquito spray, lemongrass, mosquito spray. This is rose water. I put it on my face um, to have, you know, for cleanliness, to, to protect when I'm driving so that my face doesn't get dirty from all the soot. Um, and this is a uh, like also another bug spray, but all other like lavender, other other herbs. All right, so and these and these sprays really work, even though they're the sprays really work, even though they're herbs, natural. Um, all right, so this is a vegetable mix. It's, I, I asked for vegetables instead of rice, and this is what they gave me really yummy so bean sprouts beans um green beans whatever so yeah it's my favorite it's called sayur urab <laughs> uh so i'm still learning bahasa we take a we haven't been really on top of our bahasa classes but um we have a class that we go to it's once a week um, we actually, we went this past week, so pretty good. And yeah, it's a pretty nice life. Today I went swimming, did sauna swimming, sw sauna swimming. My face got full of acne because I had, I forgot to use my rose water spray. Like before when we were in our old place, we were, every time me and Andrew, we went to the sauna, I would spray our faces <laughs> before we went home. And I didn't realize that that was really protecting our faces from getting acne. Because like as soon as we moved and I, I, I lost this spray, like I, I packed it up somewhere. And um, I just forgot about it. We stopped 
spraying our faces and immediately the acne started coming. And that's how I knew like that's the one difference. Uh, it really worked. If you, um, you know, it's very cheap. It's just rose water. It's a rose water spray. You just spray it on your face. Uh, it really works wonders. Um, natural, it's a natural toner for your face, which I don't know why I even started doing that. Like nobody even told me that it would work, but um, I just saw that it was in a spray bottle. But um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Swimming sauna, swim, you know I do, but swimming, swimming sauna back and forth for for blood circulation. It's a little bit of exercise, a little bit of relaxation, and blood circulating. And um, yeah, it's pretty nice. This this dinner, this whole thing was fifty one thousand rupees, which is like about three dollars and a few cents. I just think about like all the people that I know that are making and spending millions every year to live very mediocre lives in the states or in other countries that are very expensive. Like. I just feel bad because I feel like those people can be, you know, I mean, everybody can do everything, but I think people just don't believe what they can do. Like, I want to be a singer. People think you have to be like stupidly wealthy and have a really fancy voice. I never was a singer. I never sang. And... I'm 31, I'm starting to sing, I'm starting to grow a singing voice from scratch. Today I had a voice lesson. It's really incredible that at 31 you can grow a singing voice from scratch. It's really, really amazing. And it's actually working. And I'm gonna sing for you guys. I'm gonna make some music, sing for you guys. And you know, it takes time, any skill takes time to learn takes dedication, practice, you know, um, but if you want it, you can do it, and sometimes you don't know what you want, sometimes it takes playing around like a baby, playing around, and getting to know yourself, exploring what you can do, exploring what you can train yourself to do, I love this life, because I can do that, I think the more you spoil yourself, the more you allow yourself to follow your instincts, what you want to do, the more you allow yourself to be a child, the easier life gets because you become exposed to possibilities that you didn't even know you could chase before. I think that's the most valuable thing, is knowing what's out there for you so that you can follow it in the first place, not just the ability to because when I think of like the, the people that I, I would feel bad for the most it's not people that can't or don't have what they want it's the people that don't even know what they can have don't even know that they could have so much better in life because they just didn't see it they just weren't exposed anyway I'm gonna stop stop yapping and I'm gonna start watching a movie so it's the morning and I have a bubblegum bathing suit that I want to wear so badly even though it doesn't match with my outfit so I'm basically just wearing it together <laughs> I'm gonna set this right here <laughs> no PDAing in Bali Indonesia no. PDAing is not allowed in Indonesia <laughs> Andrew this morning woke up reading a article about how expats are getting in trouble in Indonesia for PDAing um, because it's like not respectful to the culture and so the thing is like with me I'm always PDAing with Andrew naturally it's not like something I'm doing on purpose so now we have to be very conscious to be very we have to learn to be very conscious no PDA in public Holding hands is okay. So, um, yeah, it's very easy to forget that we live in a Muslim country, like, that has rules. <laughs> okay, because also there's like so many other expats that do it. Okay, so my outfit for today, my outfit, 
and I'm just gonna keep my bubblegum bathing suit on and see how long it lasts. And um, we're not gonna have chia pudding for breakfast because we're gonna go out for breakfast. Um, we're probably gonna have chia in the afternoon. In the meantime, we're gonna go out for breakfast, then probably do some yoga, and then, should we do yoga first? No, it's for dinner. Okay, we'll eat breakfast first and then we'll do yoga because me and Andrew are yogis now. And then we're going to go shopping for plants so we can decorate this place and add plants everywhere. Like, you see that? Like skylight? How cool would it be if there was plants hanging from it? Like, there's so many places in this house where, like, there could be plants hanging, hanging from, like, just all the places. Like, just check out that living room area like how nice it would look with planters hanging everywhere and we're thinking we're thinking to not just have plants hanging but have them hanging in coconuts so anytime like we always have coconuts when we go out to have them to put them inside of like the you know you know like the dried coconuts they make really nice looking plant pots Anyways, okay, breakfast time. One thing I forgot is my sprays. So, got lemongrass spray. I'm gonna spray all over myself so I don't get bitten today because it's just always getting bitten. Although, as I become healthier and we've been uh, less inflammation in my body means my mosquito bites don't itch me as much as they used to which is really nice. I think part of it is also just getting acclimated when you're in a place and you're getting bitten incessantly and it's just non-stop over time. I think you get used to it. Your body just, you stop noticing it so much. But I think also a lot of it is just um, the inflammation in our bodies has gone down. So I don't feel it as much. And another thing I'm gonna do which, as I said last night, I didn't do this for a while because um, we lost a bottle. Is I'm gonna spray rose water on our faces. So, and I think the rose water has really been helping to protect us from the suit in the street because, like, especially when we're driving, our faces are being covered in suit from the fumes and whatever so I'm gonna spray some on Andrew as well and I think it's really gonna make our acne go away because mm, I don't know if you can tell but I it's not bad it's not bad you can't tell but I agree a little bit stuff laundry day babe yes can I spray your face shopping list Wrap some peanut butter, coconut cream, agave, bean sprouts, eggs. That monkey is licking the wall. Okay. <laughs> I will try not to smile. Try to show no teeth. <laughs> I want to give it food. No. Become his friend. No. And then the next step is you get stuff growing from it. Like, I don't think they planted those on purpose. Like, it was a real gutter at one point. Interesting. It looks pretty, though. Yeah, it looks very pretty. So I'm having a drink called Hot Monkey, which is lemongrass, ginger, honey, and lemon, and a, a cinnamon stick. And I, it's really delicious. Very delicious. And what about you, baby? What are you having? Just cappuccino. Cappuccino with a little heart. These monkeys attack their eggs. Oh. <laughs> 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 
We are at the nursery, which is also a fair. It's like a carnival type of thing. So this is the nursery, so quiet. And I guess they have a carnival. I don't know which day of the week. It's closed, very quiet, but Andrew's looking at some flowers, plants for the house. Very nice. Andrew's talking to the guy, saying, "What's up?" <laughs> oh, so how much is seven hundred thousand in dollars? Like, like a forty, 40 something. 40. Yeah, 40 like something. High end bonsai tree costs about 40 bucks. So, how long does it take to make these bonsai trees? Uh, I think years. In some cases, like maybe, you know, five years. Like some of these bigger ones take a long time. So, it takes them years and they have to like shape it in a fancy way, like yeah, in so an artistic way. Like aluminum. This aluminum wire to like shape the branches as they grow. Okay, so I thought. They were just plants, but they're actually like. No. Yeah, this is a whole. Bonsai trees are a whole separate thing. And I'm not an expert on bonsai trees, but. Yeah. It's pretty significant. Yeah. Very cool. I just told me about a puppy that bit some guy in Java, and then the guy got rabies and died. <gasps> but it was oh my little, god. It was a little puppy that did it. No, go. So. No, no, go. Go. <laughs> go. Go. <laughs> he thinks you want to play. No. Go. 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 No rabies for me. But if you want to take this smaller still like this, this mm -hmm. will give you more cheaper this fifty thousand. Okay. Okay. What other what other plants? What other plants? Other plants. But for indoor, I just tell you, I, I just um. No. No. Uh, the recommend. I just recommend of this for indoor, for okay. dark side, for you know, sun. Okay. Outside. How, mu how much is this one? Same 75. And what's it called? Siri Enjoy. Siri Enjoy. So we just grabbed a bite and we're in this pillow and blanket store and we got a bunch of stuff. I'm so excited to show you guys. Oh, my hair. I'm so excited to show you guys what it looks like in our house when we take it home. We got a bunch of, we got a really good deal on uh, pillows, blankets and yeah. bean bags yeah. for the attic. Yeah. It's gonna look very cute. Uh, fitting everything on Andrew's bike. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're gonna be a real Bali man. Driving with like a whole bunch of furniture. It's good. <laughs> is home in one piece and all the stuff is home in one piece and it's looking really good in this environment the green matches really well with the beige it's like the green two throw blankets and i love these little tassels and there's one throw blanket back there and it's gonna look really good with the green plants we add more green plants here and then we're gonna change those two art pieces and then I want to show you guys up there. Climb this staircase right here up into the treehouse. Oh. So right up here, these are the bean bags that we got. 
that's what, those are the pieces of furniture that we got today. These two bean bags. So this little space can be like a game board playing or movie watching, like an entertainment space. And um, yeah, down there is more just lounging and working on laptops. There's like little lots of little outlets down there. They added another outlet down there. So yeah. It's fun. It's fun nesting. I think we're getting really good at this. I mean, I think like we're getting good at um, working together, I think, because we've done it like so far, baby. How many homes have we furnished? And you're how many homes? This would be like the third we've furnished. Like, yeah. There was a house in Columbia, but I don't think we really furnished it. Yeah, we didn't furnish the one in Columbia. Yeah, we lived in many, many places together. Um, and Andrew was furnishing his place in St. Paul when he like, uh, he would like call me and ask me which piece of furniture I like, whatever. But like three places that we furnished together. Actually, did we furnish? Yeah, the Hearst house. Yeah, we did. I mean, Andrew worked on a lot of the fundamental things in the house. So yeah, house hacking. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go maybe to the spa. Possibly. That looks so nice. That green with the basket colors. Yeah, it ended up being kind of neat. Yeah, I love the tassels so much. Okay, moment of truth for this chia pudding. It's very hard. It needs more coconut water this time. Mm. Is it good? I mean, it needs more coconut water. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, there's some more in there. Okay. Yeah, last time was the opposite problem. I don't know why it's so dark. What is he? Do you know the song that he's singing? Nope. <laughs> All right, I want to tell you what's in this chia pudding bowl. So there's chia pudding, hard to tell. Um, maybe you can tell in there. There's a chia pudding. Um, there's dra so so the chia pudding. It's chia with coconut water. There's dragon fruit, mango, kiwi. Um, there's yellow grapes, sunflower seeds, goji berries, dried goji berries, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, and cacao nibs. And yeah, it's everything that's in here. Very, very anti-inflammatory. Check this out. It's a moving, like it doesn't even look like a worm. What is this? What kind of worm is this? It's like a... It looks like a little piece of foam or something. What is that? Tuna? It's the morning, September 1st. Our beautiful new couch pillows. Throw blankets. And my Barbie bathing suit outfit. And, um... I just called my sister and I'm putting some mosquito lotion on myself and we went to breakfast this morning. We tried a new place and it was kind of disappointing. It was like pricier than other places but it, it was, the food was very minuscule and like it was like fancy and the presentation was nice but like it was very little food and it's just reminded me why I don't like going to fancy places for dinner or breakfast like if the place is um I feel like medium star medium rated 
restaurants, like what like high rated places, but not too fancy. I feel like the fancier a restaurant is, I don't know why it's like this, but the fancier a restaurant is, the more hungry you come out feeling. Like it doesn't actually do the job of feeding you and it actually makes me really annoyed. Like what's the point? What's the point of going to a place and spending more money so that I can come out more hungry? And then, and then you're like, oh, like, well, I should order this because I'm still hungry. I should order this extra thing because I'm still hungry. You end up spending and spending and spending and not feeling full. And it takes forever. Like, what do they do to take so long to make this uh, eggs styled in this? It's just eggs, you know, like style in a special way. And granted, like, these meals are still not anything like, you know, the U.S. And But it's just even within... A cheaper market I think it's just like this everywhere in the world where you you don't necessarily get a better deal by spending more money in fact by spending more money you might actually end up getting the scarcity I don't like that scarcity like the scarcity meals where you have to count everything on your plate and, and you're just feeling like ooh, I, I don't want to eat it too fast because it's because it's gonna be gone and it feels like the the chef like had like four pieces of whatever they had and they like gave you three of them and now they're like it just feels like scarcity spending more money doesn't always get better value that's how i i see it of course as a seller of whatever I want to sell, I want to charge the most money. I want to charge more money than everybody else. I want to be the most expensive product in the room because I want people to come to me because they actually want the thing and they want higher quality of whatever that thing is. Oftentimes what happens like when people pay more money for something is they want the thing so much and they want, and, they, and, they, and they're gonna be more likely to pay more attention to detail, they're gonna be more likely to make the most, the best use of that thing. They're gonna be more likely to treat it nicely, to be careful with it. Like you pay more money for a car rental or a car lease, you're gonna treat the car better because it hurts more, it took more money out of you. Um, and you're gonna want to preserve it. Um, so on the seller side, always charge the most you can. On the buyer side, you don't always wanna pay the most. Buy low, sell high. And, and the cool thing about buy low, sell high as a principal, this is my mosquito repellent lotion. The cool thing about buy low, sell high as a principal for anything in life is that what is low to you is not always low to other people. What is low to, um, what is high to you is not always what's high to other people. So you might actually be spending what is low to you and to somebody else that might still be high. So they might still be getting what they want because they're selling high to you. Um, and you're still getting what you want because you're buying low for you. And that's what makes for, that's what makes economics wonderful. That's what makes this whole world ecosystem so beautiful is that people are different and we have different expectations and the fact that our lives and our expectations are different allows us to coexist with each other in a way that, you know, if we all wanted the same exact thing, we might be living in scarcity because if we all wanted the same exact thing, we all had the same beliefs, the same values. Like a lot of people really irritate me the way they think. Actually, most people, the way they think irritates me. I get, I get very easily irritated by the way people think, the way people are, I'm just always irritated. But the thing is that at the same time, I don't wanna be in a place where everybody is exactly like me because I understand that People being and thinking different is how I'm able to have a good life. And it's, I think, it, I think people really underestimate this fact. 
like someone else being able to do the thing that you're not willing to do. Somebody else being willing to pay the money that you're not willing to pay. Um, somebody else having a different ideal of what's wonderful is how you're able to have your ideal of what's wonderful. A lot of people, like in different places in the world, like in the US, but in a lot of places, here it's like that too, everywhere. A lot of people um, think they want everybody to be exactly the same. They think they want everybody to like get a universal basic income. If you heard, if you heard of that, the universal basic income where everybody gets paid like a certain amount every month that is like identical to each other. And everybody gets the same exact benefits, you know, people um, think they want that. They want to have the same exact everything as everybody else. They want the same. Um, we can't be, you know, we have, to, or, or, you know, people will talk about how sharing the same values, the same values as the people that live in the same country as them. And I understand it too, and I was very much part of that. Like, you want to be in a country where you share the same values as people, where people don't have different, you know. And I agree with it on a lo some level. Uh, I agree with, like, I want to be in a place where, like, if I'm voting for a certain thing, that there's people that, like, sort of get where I'm coming from, that I can, like, kind of live in the same thing as them. But at the same time, it's also beneficial to recognize that people not having the same values as you is how you're able to have a good life. People not, and, and that's why like I have this channel, I make my videos, I talk about the things that I talk about, but I don't like to advertise this too much. I don't want the wrong people to watch my videos. I, I, want, my, I want my little club of I want, I want this, my viewership to be very exclusive and eventually I want to have like a secret society that nobody even knows about that is like just invite only because the, if everybody had access to the same information and everybody cared about the same things, it just wouldn't be as valuable. You, what you know wouldn't be as valuable if everybody else knew it too. You know, like I used to feel like I want to I want to uh, educate the world on everything that I know. I want everybody to know. Everybody to know what power is and how powerful they can be and how they can have everything they want in this world and like. Um, everything that I would teach to my younger self. But like, the truth is, that wouldn't be good for me. That wouldn't be beneficial for me if everybody knew what I knew. It would just be hard, it would be, it'd be harder. It would be harder, it would be, the bar would be higher. Um, I would be, I, I might be bred out. I might be competing in a way that I, I, I can't afford, you know? And so, it's really beneficial for me that only a very few people amount of people agree with me because in the paradigm of what I want and what I want in life and what I like I still have room to be to get those things and be those things and still be 20 steps ahead of everybody else I still have uh, room to compete in a way that if everybody else I'm getting bitten like crazy in a way that if everybody else knew what I was, knew what I knew, did everything I was doing, maybe I couldn't compete. It'd be kind of hard. Um, it would be like competing against myself, but much stronger because, you know, I've seen people that are much stronger, more smarter, more relaxed, you know, coming from a, a more stable nervous system. Um, and I don't think I would like that very much. But it would force me to come up with better hacks. So, that's what I'm thinking about this morning. 
so I'm gonna go play some piano now. And we're traveling to Kuala Lumpur tomorrow. Um, Andrew's in a meeting. We're traveling to Kuala Lumpur. And um, I'm excited to see what it's like there. I've never been there. I've never been to Singapore either, which everyone's talking about Singapore too. But I w I'm excited to see Kuala Lumpur first, Malaysia. We're gonna go there, gonna check out some shopping centers. Uh, there's certain things that I wanna see if they have in Kuala Lumpur because shopping in Bali is not good. It's like, it's just really hard to find stuff in Bali. So if you're looking for a special electronic or special thing, like, you, it's just hard to find in Bali. They have their stores that have it, but yeah, you're just limited. Um, so yeah, two days in Kuala Lumpur. Maybe I'll vlog it. And uh, yeah, see how it goes.